Oh, we have together. another. We have okay. another. Oh, um, yeah. We have yeah, two tests. The, uh, the one that we had is ten marks, kan? Right? Yeah, yeah. We already done one. So yes. we have another. My requesting, Salam, was, Salam, madam. My requesting was Salam, last. Salam. Last test we got only three days. Sometimes in the same day we have another submission. That's why it's a become sometimes oh, difficult. Okay. So is it possible to get a few days more or? <laughs> it's my cordial request. Um, I think, uh, brother Miss Ba, I think uh, where did you do your degree in 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 IR, in in our university? No, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, uh, where did you do your degree? In Bangladesh? In Bangladesh? No, I'm from here. Yeah. I graduated from here. Oh, <laughs> uh, Tulfik or Quran Sunnah? Yeah, Quran and Sunnah. So I guess if you're a graduate of uh, UIA, then you know that we, this is normal for us to have. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but last submission I faced last submission I faced a problem in the same day I have another big submission and presentation <laughs> that's so if it's possible but then, yeah no but, but then I give you three days yeah. I give you three days uh, because normally for submission uh, online submission lecturers mm -hmm. give only 24 hours oh but uh, yeah <laughs> yeah but then I thought <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> I give you some time because um, I mean the exercise that I've given you need to think further and read carefully, right? So that's why I think. Even that, I feel very I feel guilty because I just noticed that you were on your um, what was mid semester break, so I'm mm -hmm. not supposed to give you works on the mid semester break. But I just noticed okay. that on Saturday. But I guess should be okay lah because you still have the remaining seven, uh, you know, seven days to enjoy your mid break. <laughs> By the way, I didn't have any break at all, you know, during the uh, mid break. We know that. <laughs> I just I have... they don't have any break. <laughs> we have a break <laughs> because after submission we are free. But after yeah. submission, our teachers start to hard work. <laughs> Working, yes. And I have pieces to examine. I have two pieces to examine. Oh, yeah, so I had a lot of uh, things to get done and I uh, mark uh, your uh, assignments, right? The RORQ, SOP and then also I had uh, some other courses uh, to mark. And you know, uh, I finally I have good justification to buy myself an iPad. <laughs> That's what I like so much. Because see, I now can start marking from my iPad, so I need not to sit on on my study table to mark your papers. So I would like to apologize. Maybe you have you you have a look at my marking on your R O R Q S O P and also the test. You yeah, can uh, 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 and then you see my handwriting can very bad. It's not because I purposely wanted to. You know, to 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 uh, whether I'm angry at you. You know, I write in a very big font. You know, red color. That is because I'm using my iPad and I'm not so used with the pen. Yeah, with the pen. So, uh, but it makes my life easier because I can immediately mark on the iPad instead of me sitting down here and you know use. Uh, I have to transfer the file and then I have to edit the pdf yeah? and then i have to type so you know based on my previous experience those were very challenging uh, work for me to mark and to keep myself fair because sometimes when you are tired you tend to rush in doing things yeah? so um during the mid break i finally decided that i have to get myself an ipad uh, which will make my life easier <laughs> and hopefully i can uh, re return your assignment faster, but yes, I have many uh, stuff to mark. Uh, you know, in addition to my administrative job, and you know, but inshallah, I will. Yeah, inshallah. I mean, that's 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 how the leap of an academics. Yeah, uh, this is what I am going to tell you, my dear students. So this is the life of an academics. You need always to be 
well organized, prepare yourself and uh, you know highly disciplined. Now that you're only focusing on your study, then maybe if you're married or you have some other responsibilities, yeah. But the real challenge uh, is when you start your life as an academic, uh, whereby you are required to do uh, other things, you know, uh, to fulfill your what uh, is uh, what you call it, what you are credible for, you know, an academic. You are you enjoy the better status in the society, right? But then that comes with responsibility. So if now you are lazy, you don't, you are not, you are disorganized, okay? or you do reading because your lecturers ask you to read, uh, please stop doing that because um, you know, being an academic, you really need to be an organized person and you really need to read a lot, yeah, and try to get the best methods possible to make your academic life uh, interesting. Yeah, that's why I said, for example, I said just now, I had to purchase an iPad to make my work easier and fun. So I am not stressful when marking my student's assignment and I can bring my iPad to meetings, you know. So uh, this is the thing. Now why I'm, I'm telling you this also because being an academic, you will, you will not be a rich person. <laughs> so getting an iPad, even for a lecturer like me, is very expensive, you see. <laughs> very expensive. Uh, but then, uh, because you love your job so much, then you you will do whatever is possible to to make your your job, uh, you know, fun to you. So this is the life of an academic. Uh, I have no regret since I first joined this academic world. But okay, my 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 another message to you: if you think you cannot adjust to this life of an academic. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better look for other types of works. Eh? Don't be an academic because uh, you know once when you get stuck with a certain career and you are you don't like it, it will be a lifelong uh, what you call that lifelong agonies. Uh, so you need to love your job from now on. You need to love what you are doing. Now. Yeah. Okay. So that is my very long uh, advices. Uh, for a, nice yeah, for a very short message that I hope um, you are crystal clear with your ambition, with what you are doing now. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Read whole day but cannot write a single line. This effect, ma'am. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I was in your position before. Some of you were frustrated oh. that you get like two out of five, three article, out of five. Three times, four times read, but after finishing, I'm thinking, what should I write? Everything we already mentioned. Don't worry, not only you, I am also like you. Don't worry, everybody is like that. But it takes um, skills and experience. So, you know, skill and experience is not develop in one day still I say develop time from time to time so you need to be patient this is also another requirement to be an academic patience uh, patient and passion yeah patient sabar sabar and passion so you're very inquisitive very enthusiastic to be an academic and uh, honesty yeah honesty uh, inquisitive mind so you need to have this very diligent uh, type uh, of personality you want to know you want to know you want to dig further you want to dig further yeah uh, so don't worry don't don't be frustrated quickly you have to have strong determination this is what i think not many uh, pg students have therefore uh, some of them say oh very stressful very stressful don't get stressful I mean, make it as something that is fun for you to explore, just like you are exploring the world. <laughs> okay. um, I mean, today you don't have the answer, the next day you know a little bit, the day after you know better, the day after you know better, the day after you know better. Isn't that fine? So from uh, Zulumatil Wahmi ila Nuril Fahmi. <laughs> you know, from Zulumatil Wahmi that you, you assume assumptions 
make you in the dark. Yeah? But after you get some uh, knowledge, then you are lightened up a bit. So when you are lightened up, you can see things, right? You can see things brighter and brighter and brighter. Because knowledge is known, right? Uh, so inshallah, I hope I am able to give you motivation. Uh, you know, regardless of the situation, we are in COVID-19, you are stuck in your room, you cannot have face to face, cannot go to the library, can you cannot meet your friends. But um, as academics, we need to have this uh, determination to help us to move forward, move forward. Because there will come a day when you are left to do your own work with less supervision. Uh, this is a real challenge, working with less supervision. No one is controlling you, especially once when you have a doctorate. Yeah? So no one is controlling you, but who will control you? You yourself. The most noble thing that we can do to ourselves is when we have self-control. Not only, I mean, in religion, this is very clear, again, self-control. Even without people around us, but we remain obedient to the uh, to the injunctions, religious injunctions, yeah? uh, to the do's and don'ts in religion. The same goes to our life. Uh, I mean, they practices. If we can self-regulate ourselves in our career, okay? so inshallah, eh, these students don't get tired. Yeah? Yes, you are just in the first semester, you have another three semesters to go. <laughs> can, uh, what I'm going to do now, I can I get your uh, permission that I have with you your um, is that your uh, your submission so we can discuss together is that okay with you yes ma'am uh, well, you don't want I other will... people to look at your your work okay. can it but let me mm. find where did i put it can i so i have one sample for exercise submitted assignments Okay, ma. We haven't discussed, right? R Q R O N S O P. Have we? I think no. Not yet. Can somebody answer? No. Not yet. Yeah, Not yet. Not yet. Ah, okay. So we discuss together. Ah, uh, good. Okay. So now we discuss together why? Because we want everybody else to. Learn from this exercise. Abdul Karim, I take your permission, yeah? Yeah, so We can help each other and yeah. this exercise will make you us uh, understand better and problem. Uh, how to do the proposal, hopefully. I have a problem with Before the, the end of this semester, you can uh, finalize the title. And finalize the title and you can submit nomination of supervisor to the I think I have a bad connection or the problem with you. Um, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you, you hear me? very well. What is that? Um, oh, Abdul Karim? Yes. Oh, okay, my internet is not good. I oh, think maybe so. Madam's connection a bit low. Yeah. I my, my connection is bad, right? I think so. Assalamualaikum. My connection is bad, right? Now, now, it's, now it's a bit Yeah, bad. I'm good. Uh, yeah, now it is connected. Now it is not. But, uh, Brother Abdul Karim, you send me the new one, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So, I didn't I have the new I one. I have the form. Yeah, I, I send the problem statement. Still, still, I said I didn't send the last one. Yeah, but I know after I mark, you send me a new one. Yeah, but the one that yes, I have a new, is not a new, the new one. The one that I have here, not the new one. Yes, yeah, yeah, I the changed one my I'm... my topic. Mm -mm -mm. So the one that I have here is not the new one. Uh, so I am not going to discuss it. I'm going to discuss another paper. 
So let's take a look at Brother uh, Abdullah. Can you see? Yes, the, madam. Uh, oh, all right, Brother Abdullah. Can you see the? You don't mind, eh, Brother Abdullah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look. Okay, Brother Abdullah. First of all, this is yes. not problem statement, yeah, Brother Abdullah. You have to yes, make yes. it in a form of paragraph. Yeah, paragraph. After okay. I making the mistake, I understand what is the. <laughs> yes. Okay, never mind. But uh, I want to see where in this uh, points, where in this these points that you can uh, incorporate in your SOP statement of problem. Okay, let's mm -hmm. take a look at the title, the rule of religion of religious therapy in drug rehab method in Madrasa Al Ulum. So this is good topic. Maybe the word rule there will be discussed by your intended supervisor later on because I think the word rule is not uh, appropriate. I think maybe the better word is the approaches of religious therapy. Yeah? But yes. then you can discuss with your supervisor later. So maybe yeah. you, uh, you, you change to the approaches of religious therapy in drug rehab method in madrasa and my sub temple. Yeah? Yes. Uh, Okay, now uh, drug, so you have all this drug abuse, we don't know the best solution, the increase. Okay, let me highlight what can be the uh, the uh, the background of your problems. Like you can, you can highlight this to bring the discussion to the problem that you want to discuss. So this is what I said, the background of your problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. the real problem now is uh, religious therapy in drug rehabilitation, right? This is the problem that you want to study, right? Yes. Religious therapy in drug. Okay, but why you want to study this uh, religious therapy? Therapy. You want to study because there have been cases on drug abuse and they have yet the better solution or um, you want to help in finding the better solution. Uh, the background on the problem is also because you know of drug abuse and increased number of addiction. Yeah, and uh, I think when you talk about increasing of criminal, you better not to highlight because this is another phenomenon that uh, is not directly uh, related to your problem. Yeah, you, are, you don't care about the criminal because. I mean, if you want to associate drug addiction and criminal, then you, uh, this is like another research altogether. Uh, unless if you have statistics, lah, real statistic research uh, based statistics that show that, oh, the number of uh, uh, criminals uh, have become increased because uh, those uh, commit, uh, who committed in the crimes were drug addiction, uh, drug addicts, yeah. Okay, so, okay, and also I don't encourage you to say modern medicines in uh, impacting to mental health and physical health. Also, I don't encourage you to bring in because um, you need also a research-based findings on this. You cannot just be on hearsay. Eh? Uh, uh, and then if you want this, then maybe the title should be like you know, comparing between the modern treatments and religious therapy treatments to, to you know, drug addiction. Uh, then you need mm -hmm. the statistic on the, you know, need research on this modern treatment. So mm -hmm. I I don't think you should put this modern medicines. Yeah? Don't don't also put modern medicines are uh, expensive and affordable. <laughs> so this is, the, <laughs> this is the outside the topic. Yeah, I which I don't think you should be it shouldn't be the background of your research. Mm. Ah. And then, uh, what do you mean by Muslims are conducted into the temple? You mean Muslims went to temple for drug rehab? Yeah, there is a case happened in Thailand. Only one case or many cases? <laughs> yes, there is a happen. Ah, okay, you need Thailand. to have this, uh, the evidence for that. Is there any evidence in terms of, you know, papers, writing, statistics? Do you have that evidence? Mm. 
but the muslim muslim addicted they are sometimes they uh, went to the temple yes yeah. but i need to know if you have the evidence like for example they are research done that um. you say that all oh, number increase and then the problem is you find muslims are also taking the alternative treatment at the temple if it's reported in the article so and so that you know from uh, uh, they are almost 20% of the Muslims went into this temple. Uh, we have to almost, show the evidence. <laughs> show, evi show evidence in the chapters lah, later. Mm. Not in the problem or statement, but you can indicate in the problem or statement that oh, the increase of numbers, yeah, getting increased yes. from one to another. And then also you say Muslims, some Muslims are uh, went to the temple to get the, uh, mm. to, to, to overcome their addiction problem. Therefore, this research intends to compare between, and then, but then you have also to say that, you know, the issue is there are also madrasa or religious therapy done by the uh, Muslims uh, NGOs, for example. But uh, it is, uh, this research intends to know what, uh, uh, why the drug addicts choose to take the uh, rehab methods at the temple uh, and not at the madrasa. All right. And this yes. research is also looking forward to uh, to explore the uh, drug rehab methods conducted at the at the madrasa as well as at the temple. Yes. All right. So you see your your statement of problem will be in one paragraph only. But you give uh, them the, ah, you, yes, just one paragraph. In the paragraph, not one by one something like this. Yes, no, no not like this one, my dear brother. Yes. It's yes. supposed to be in a paragraph. But then you have to give the background of the problem. Your problem now, when I say your problem is the research problem, is religious therapy in drug we have. Okay, but what makes you want to study about this? Because you say you want to study about it because the increased number of um, the increased number of drug addiction yeah, every year. If you can have the statistic, it would be good. Yeah? And then you, you also say that uh, drug abuse are many. Maybe because uh, it's easy to get. Yeah? Maybe also because there are uh, varieties of drugs today synthetic drugs yeah? because yeah. last time we didn't have synthetic drugs not as much as today now we have synthetic drugs yeah? so you know more opportunity for people to get involved in drug uh, misuse of drugs yeah? but then you also discovered that the drug addicts went for rehab so some of them some Muslims went to the madrasa but you found that some Muslims went to the temple so this research therefore look forward to study the rehab method done by the madrasa and the, the temple. So because why? Maybe because you want to know. Later on you ask like, in the research question, you want to know why Muslim choose to go to the temple instead of the madrasa. This is very good title, eh, Brother Abdullah. I hope you maintain this title. And uh, you know the Malaysia buat sampai jadi means that make it until it happen. Eh? Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have the title already. No need to have scratch your head already. Eh? Okay. Now let's take a look at the research objective. It's not number one to salah. Yeah. Eh? Then khatok tahis tu. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Nah. So maybe number one. Um, it's not you want to establish, you want to explore religious therapy yeah, as the alternative. No need to say best alternative. You are influencing your examiner. You are influencing your reader. This is also mm. important when you write a thesis. Yeah, student, your thesis should sound neutral. This is academic work. You cannot use adjective that will influence people. This is not objective. <laughs> Don't use adjective or oh, the best alternative. People have yet to read your thesis. You already said, oh, this is the best. How come? Ah, you need to make it neutral. You need to present your evidence, your judgment. Uh, at the end, let the reader make their own findings based on your, make their own 
decision based on your own findings, based on your findings. Yeah. So for example here, uh, you want to explore, this is the objective, you want to explore religious therapy as the alternative uh, forms of drug rehabilitation. Yeah. And then you want to uh, compare or maybe you want to uh, compare and contrast between the uh, drug rehab method in madrasa and temple. This is second objective. Third objective, um, you want to recommend, provide recommendations. Okay, this is good. Yeah, for alternative drug rehab methods. So either you have three or four uh, objectives. Uh, this three, is only three. Ah, it's okay. You can three. You can have three or four. Lah. It depends on what you want to know. Uh, maybe your supervisor will help you in this one because now I this is what I can suggest based on what you have uh, written here. But your supervisor may have different angle looking at the title. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So your research questions will be something in relation to your research objective. So, for example, uh, establish can just now. So, your research question would be uh, this research uh, seeks to explore to explore the alternative of drug rehab, uh, uh, re religious to explore religious thera religious therapy as alternative to uh, drug rehab. Okay, before that, brother Abdullah, I think yes. you need one more question, lah. Because you're talking about re religious therapy, you need to define what is the meaning, what is the definition and meaning of religious therapy. Mm. Ah, so you see now you have four research objectives or four research questions. So for, for example, first question, what is the meaning and definition of religious therapy in drug rehabilitation? Okay. And mm. then to explore the religious therapy in drug rehabilitation in the mosque, in the mosque, in the madrasa, in the temple. Yeah. And then uh, question number three, to study or to compare the drug rehab method conducted in the in the madrasa and the temple. And for to offer recommendation for mm. drug rehabilitation program in the so on. So both both objective and research question must be uh, relevant. Yes, they must be tallied. Oh. Ah, okay. So I just I just write mm. different things. Ah, tak boleh. That's why that's why you see what I did. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Only three. That's why I I when I do this I don't want to read. This happen also when I when I mark paper, when I think ah this is not relevant and all, I will not read every single word, I will just scratch. Mm -hmm. This also happen when I examine thesis. And I thought that, you know, uh, discussion too long. Normally this happened at the research literature review. And I thought this book is not relevant altogether, discussion is not relevant, I will just scrap because you know, it's, I don't want to waste my time reading something that is not relevant to the research. Uh, Madam, uh, which one should, uh, should come first? Mm. Which one, which, which one uh, between uh, research question and objective, which oh, one we okay. have to, uh, yes. Okay, you follow the IIUM thesis manual, check in the IIUM website, yeah? And then you will find out, I think, research objective, then you have research question, yeah? But, I'm not sure lah because I have, I I read thesis but okay, let me see the thesis yeah, that yeah. I have. But, but, but which one we have to think, thinking about? Oh, I, I, okay, that is basically uh, preference lah based on your preference lah. Uh, for me, I like to think about questions. Uh, question, question, then objective. Uh, okay. I mean, that is my approach. But some people, they like to, uh, do research objective and then from the objective they extract questions. Okay. But for me, I like to come with question first and then I identify the objective. Both are useful. Yes. Okay. okay. So I'm helping you with that. Eh? Uh, okay. Now let's take a look at our paper. Thank you. All right. Uh, our so Arif wants to write on um, on 
uh, Ar-Runi, Maulana Jalaluddin Ar-Runi Arif is a Sufi <laughs> So we have discussed ya, yeah, Brother Arif uh, We have discussed about this and uh, uh, With regard to this one uh, I uh, request that Brother Arif to look at the word dimensions If Maulana Jalaluddin Ar-Runi use the word uh, dimension uh, Then we can use the word dimension if it is in Arabic, then we need to see um, the translation, the right translation of the word dimensions. Yeah? Uh, otherwise, uh, the category of adab uh, uh, in the teachings of Maulana Jalaluddin Ar-Rumi. Uh, then, but then I, I also suggest that if it is possible to look at the books and, you know, for example, uh, the, to zoom to particular uh, particular. Uh, themes yeah, because based on selected readings uh, of Arumi because uh, the Matnawi is voluminous. Yeah, I'm afraid that Arif will be drowning yeah, <laughs> when reading the poems yeah, because they are voluminous and too many. Yeah, so you need to narrow down a bit. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, okay, uh, look at the research question. The research questions, I think, are good. I think uh, they are good. What is definition and classification of adab according to Maulana Jalaluddin Ar-Rumi? Eh? Uh, see, see, according to Jalaluddin Ar-Rumi, what are Rumi's ideas and perceptions towards adab? Um, and how are Rumi, how did Ar-Rumi practice and demonstrate adab? In see, this one is quite uh, vague um, but that's why that's why vague because you need to find the theme yeah otherwise you do it will be too wide yeah be too wide yeah? and the research objective uh, reflected the research question yeah? to offer society an example of Sufi scholars who practice adab in the endeavor to produce good Muslims so maybe to offer Rumi. I, I can I go toilet just now. Oh, Rim, no wonder you were quiet. But I record this lecture. You can watch this now because I cannot remember what I said just now. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can uh, you can uh, watch the recorded lecture later. So to offer society, uh, maybe you can get to offer the ways Rumi practice and demonstrate adab in his uh, in his, uh, you know, uh, personality uh, to offer Rumi's as example of Muslim with good personality in terms of his practicing uh, and dem demonstration of agap even though uh, I think this is still vague, eh? this is still abstract, eh? rather Aris but you can polish this a uh, little bit more if you are able to find according to the teachings of Marana Rumi, this is too big if you can find things eh? For example, you talk about, you know, the day-to-day uh, -day adab, uh, maybe the adab with teachers, or uh, maybe adab uh, in learning knowledge, or adab in relating to others. So you need to find theme, then you can be more specific instead of, you know, like just swim in the ocean, eh? uh, very big ocean, blue ocean, eh? uh, the blue <laughs> ocean strategy, and you will be drowning because there will be Plenty of resources that you have to deal with and then you're confused huh? which one you have to Or the other way, but that depends on the supervisor lah. Maybe some supervisor can tolerate at each uh, level of research uh, Objective research question to be as uh, as general as this but then you narrow it, it, it down when you uh, when you write scope of research okay? So our research, maybe you can say under the scope of research that you're only focusing on uh, a Rumi's conception, conception of adab or category of adab uh, uh, in relation to uh, in relation to Muslim and non-Muslim relationship or in relation to Muslim's relationship with other religions, for example. And then you start looking at uh, what are the poems, ke, the sayings ke, that he has with regard to uh, Muslims' uh, relationship with other religions. Uh, that you put in the scope of research. That is doable, but depends on your supervisor. Lah, yeah? uh, but if I were to be a supervisor, I want it to be clear-cut at the research questions. Yeah? Okay. 
I mean, if I were the supervisor, normally I want things to be very explicit in the R O N R Q. Okay, statement of problem. Statement of problem ni needs to has to be improvised. Only use adapt in the chapter skill can use other terms, but they have to be. Apa ni? Yeah, I also can. <laughs> they have to be explained and justified. Uh, explain and justify. So, you know, maybe you use other terms ke apart from adab. Hmm, like here, moral system because, you know, moral system may referring to the the way um, one behave, yeah, but adab is very philosophical term. Tau. So, adab is the philosophy of be, of your behavior, of behaving. Uh, and so it's not really the the way you act, but the philosophy of act of your action. Okay. Um, so you try to be consistent with the use of adab. Uh, if you want to talk about adab, so because when you say them is also part of morality. This may be in the chapters can lah, because see part of morality is only part of adab. Yeah. Uh, and it is the outcome of adab. It's not the adab in itself. Yeah? Um, you have studied this kan in ethics, in uh, Islamic ethics. Maybe you take the Arabic subject al-akhlaq al-islamiyah. Huh? So I do not know how do you explain al-akhlaq al-islamiyah. Yeah? But uh, in, I teach Islamic ethics. Yeah. So we define ethics different from morality. Uh, because ethics is a philosophy of morality. Uh, where morality is the outcome of the philosophy, uh, uh, the way someone perceives moral. Okay. So that would be it. And you need to improve the statement of problem. Let, let, let's see. Okay? Because I want to you to have the, the, the background of this uh, statement of problem, except that I'm not so sure of the issue of adab, so I may not be able to help you like I'm helping Brother Abdullah. Eh? But anyway, so you talk about adab. So then I say adab here, you limit it to the way you relate with people around you. Yeah? Some adab refers to the moral system and encompasses every aspect of life, including one. So you see, so the word adab is bigger, right? Relationship with the self, others ultimately, and the creator. Okay, so maybe maybe this is good because you are trying to evoke the word adab with its very big meaning. Yeah, very big meaning. So you want you want to know the dimensions of adab in the selected forms of arumi. Okay, tell why. I mean, why arumi? Why arumi? So maybe you want to say Arumi have been discussed a lot in the West. Yeah? Western discourse, Western societies have discussed Arumi, citing from his poems. Yeah? Uh, but, uh, there is a but there, but you find that there is inadequate works that um, uh, discuss in depth or explore his conceptions of Adab, something like that. Yeah? Mm, so, you know, the gap is here then, because you say oh, he has been studied well by the Western uh, scholars, you know, uh, appreciating his uh, uh, spiritual or esoteric methods, yeah? appreciating his uh, poems, yeah? taking him as uh, examples of pluralism, yeah? but not much have been discussed or they have yet uh, 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 literature or research that discuss about his conception of adult. Yes. Uh, so this is your gap. This is a gap. So, okay? so therefore, this research intend to discuss the concept of adult. Say, for example, with regard to so on and so forth. Uh, and 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 this is your statement of problem. This is your statement of problem. So method you don't put in the. Uh, statement of problem tau. Methods, you have a, a specific uh, subtitle on methodology. method. Uh, methodology, yes. Methodology. So you have, uh, with regard to this one, if you are focusing, say for example, on certain chapters, 
on certain uh, book, uh, on certain volumes, then you can say textual study. Because I think when you discuss about poems, it's a textual study. Yeah. Uh, so if you read, for example, from chapter volume one to volume three, then you can say textual study. Yeah. Uh. All right. So that's about it with uh, regard to uh, brother Akmal. Uh, okay, let's see. Hey, I am helping you with this because I expect the next submission is clearer. Eh? Yeah, uh, because we don't know the right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Shahida, let's take it. Shahida, ada? Shahida, title nya Gapo, sini title nya. Okay. Concept of spiritual purification and its relationship with the recovery of anxiety disorder. Uh, oh, ini buku kakidah. Huh? <laughs> Al-Arba'in fi usuluddin and you want to uh, tackle spiritual problems with uh, akidah. This is good attempt, very challenging eh. Uh, because you know that people from psychology will say, oh janganlah cakap don't read. They all go back to religion, go back to religion. Ha. But I would say this imply what you are trying to do, eh? Okay, so sorry about what is the title because I just go straight to this thing. Put this in the last paragraph of SOP. Ah, so this is good because okay, the main purpose of this research is to study the concept of spiritual purification and its relationship with the recovery of anxiety. Disorder based on the book of Al Arba'in Fi Usuluddin. Fi Usuluddin. It will facilitate Muslims to understand the importance of get, getting closer to Allah to gain peace of mind. I mean, this expression can improve further. Eh? Even with the presence of clinical treatment by authorities around the world in general, in particular, in the issue of anxiety. Okay, so, well, uh, oh, you're so confident, eh? Uh, clinical treatment, you also cannot. Cannot. Maybe you can say this with a nicer or literal manner lah because you want to say that uh, it's not that the clinical treatment uh, has yet to settle. Eh? Uh, clinical treatment, uh, despite the clinical treatment, anxiety disorder has yet to settle. I mean this, this is not supposed to be say, said eh, in an academic writing. So in academic writing you say you want to say that you want to propose um, uh, the recovery uh, methods or approaches approaches uh, uh, towards anxiety disorder based on based on akidah or based on drawing one step closer to religion in addition to the clinical treatment. Uh, so you don't disqualify other people's um, or other initiatives or other alternatives. This is an academic approach. Yeah, when you write academic, you cannot be biased that, oh, this approach is better than the other approach. The best way is to say that you add value to the existing approach. Do you understand or not? Uh, so you have to learn the way to express yourself uh, neutrally, objectively, academically in in your thesis. Cannot be biased. Then you know like for example this one, oh even with clinical treatment also anxiety disorder cannot settle. Uh, but then say for example you propagate uh, you know approaching uh, not uh, try to solve the problem by uh, encouraging people to go back to religion. But so, uh, but uh, still cannot resolve the anxiety disorder problem. So, does that also show that your method is not good? <laughs> can. Uh, so, other people can contest also your method if you say that, oh, this method is the only method or the best method. So, but you can say, in addition to the existing method, the researcher tries to advocate. Except that, you know, being somebody uh, learning, uh, I mean, graduate from Usuluddin, I, I also wonder, wow, how Al-Arba'in to Usuluddin can help? Uh, because I think the, the relationship is not, is not uh, direct here, you see? Uh, so how are you going to make it direct? Okay, let, let's take a look what else you have. Yeah? Uh, 
Um, recover, I was going to think 40 principles chosen the subject as I did. All the practices are divided. So, the, they are too, too many. I see there are too many principles. Maybe you need to zoom down to uh, what principles. Yeah. Are you talking about Anubuwa? You know, al Petul, al Biasa, kita beriman and then uh, on on God. Is that what you mean, Sister Chaida? Uh, yes, Madam. There are forty, eh? so you cannot. This is too much for you to handle. So maybe you want to what? Maybe mm, maybe. But then, you know, people from psychology will say, oh, you cannot use this lah because this is rational approach tau. What you are trying to do is you want to address this anxiety disorder from rational, uh, using rational approach, isn't it? It's very rational approach, right? Uh, but people with anxiety disorder, they are not rationally sound. So do you think this is the right uh, approach? I mean, people from from psychology would would argue this way, lah. isn't it? Because Usuluddin, if you notice, Usuluddin is the science of a religion that combines, um, you know, uh, combines uh, the use of revelation and the use of reasoning to defend religion or, you know, from uh, other worldviews, yeah, or to support religion. So you use revelation and reason to support uh, for religious, uh, for religious uh, belief. Uh, you want to support religious belief and you want to defend, defend religious belief. This is what Usuluddin is. So, the main approach here is uh, rational. Uh, the main approach is here is rational. Uh, unlike if you say, for example, for example, say, um, for example, you say you want to approach uh, with the recovery of uh, the concept as previous is uh, a study based on based on ulumuddin uh, because. Ya Ulumuddin discuss about Tazkiyatun Nafsi lah, right? Tazkiyatun Nafsi, purification of the soul. Uh, then, it's no longer rational approach, but it's more spiritual approach as the basis to uh, address this spiritual problem, uh, this spiritual dilemma. What say you? You should think about this. Yeah, You should think about this. Maybe if you want to stick to you know, being a student of Usuluddin, I encourage you to, you know, to study Usuluddin. Uh, but maybe not on, on the issue of spirit anxiety, but maybe you want to counter atheism. Uh, you want to counter atheism, problems of doubt in faith. Uh, instead of concept of spiritualization, maybe uh, doubt, uh, religious uh, doubt in faith or something like that. What is it uh, recently? Um... Is that uh, it's not skepticism uh, um, in religion? Yeah, skepticism in religion, uh, and how to uh, counter this skepticism in religion? The study is on the um, of Arba'in to Lidin, but then <laughs> and is she on you? <laughs> I'm not your mama. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go to okay, there is another way of expression which are not encouraged in academic writing, for example due to lack of specific studies, uh, so you don't say you the lacking, maybe the lacking is on your part. You didn't have enough materials because you didn't explore 
enough or you didn't get the material you, you couldn't get the access to that material right so it's not the problems with the literature is a problem with you <laughs> so what you should say instead of saying due to the lack of specific studies you say they have yet adequate research uh, on you know, relationship between simplification and all the do you understand if you say like this and you say like that, there will be a big difference. Eh? So you say due to the lack of specific studies, wow, so how your study is so good eh, that can help to, you know. But if you say they have yet adequate or enough literature in, then people would look at your work in a positive manner. So you are going to examine this and not come to so I I don't know um yeah ways to overcome this. Uh, I don't know if you are interested to to study the course, yeah? but maybe um indirectly, I don't know, yeah, because actually can cause to anxiety disorder are many, you know. Uh, you cannot just say oh lack of religious belief or lack of understanding of religion, okay? Some people may have it genetically, some people may have certain trauma that they carry in their life, okay? So I think this is very complex uh, for you to deal with. But uh, maybe you can try to uh, help to overcome uh, by using certain approaches. Lah. Now you're using rational approaches, eh? mm. I'm not saying that you cannot do this lah. Yeah? I mean using rational approaches to address anxiety disorder. But, I mean logically speaking, yeah, people with anxiety disorder ni, they have problems with, uh, you know, uh, controlling their mind. I mean some of the sanity problem is there. So how are you going to address that sanity problem? Yeah, uh, I mean rational dia ada masalah kan. Okay. So problems cannot clearly obtain to problems concept to other to apa ni? <laughs> to, to problems and uh, the other So the problems that you want to explore here is this lah. Uh, anxiety disorder and al-arba'in uh, fi'usuriti. Okay now, uh, okay let's take a look at the objective. So I don't encourage you to study the course because if you want to study the course, um, it's very complex. One, secondly, I don't think you can do this if it if you intend to do textbook uh, library research. Yeah? Uh, I mean, if you want to know the course, then it's good to take uh, field work, yeah? empirical approach, interview method, for example. Yeah? To examine the recovery disorder and relationship distribution concept based on actually can uh, I think this al arbaim is not spiritual point it's very rational concept eh? uh, rational approach eh? based on the book of al arbaim to issue so you think about this lah maybe you want to change from anxiety disorder to skepticism in religion. Uh, doubts in faith, yeah? because there is a, a research in the US uh, that uh, show uh, many young third generation, fourth generation Muslims in America are facing a lot of doubts on Islam. Interesting, eh? Because, uh, interesting why? Because uh, children from Muslim parents are losing faith uh, slowly, slowly in Islam, whereas the whites are coming to Islam in bulk. <laughs> yeah, this is very interesting. Yeah, why Muslims lost their faith, whereas the whites in the US coming to Islam or embracing Islam, you know, uh, in a, a bulk manner, you know. Okay, so, um, to find that system. So maybe what you mean importance of getting closer to Allah and getting closer to Allah to draw oneself closer to Allah. So 
I don't know how you how do you uh, formulate this. Maybe you want to say that you know if someone understand the religion rationally, he will be able that will be will be useful to help him to draw draw him closer to Allah. Yeah, so you want to advocate rational approach in the understanding of religion in the hope to draw oneself nearer to Allah. This is your objective. Yeah? Ataupun to advocate rational understanding of religion that can help Muslims to draw, that can help to draw Muslims closer to Allah. Yeah? To identify contributions. So maybe not to identify, to advocate, uh, to advocate uh, the importance of uh, understanding religion, uh, understanding uh, to advocate rational understanding of religion by means of al arbaim fi usubiti, for example. Yeah, did you get it, uh, Shahida? Yeah. In, uh, so the the in, the questions pun uh, not valid lah, yeah, because questions depends very much on the research objective. Yeah? So you think about it lah, yeah, because I have um, I have uh, posed some difficulties lah um, on my part with regard to what you are trying to advocate. Uh, you know, uh, the solution that you try to advocate seems incompatible. But uh, if you want to carry on with this title, it's okay. I mean, let's uh, see what your supervisor can help to advise you. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at other examples. Alia. Mm. <coughs> Thank you, Madam. Right, so let's take a look at Alia. Uh, Alia, aku punya tajuk ni dia. <laughs> What is the title, Alia? Okay. Sorry, you, Madam. <laughs> <laughs> you leave me making my own guessing. <laughs> okay, so... It cannot be denied that they're raising modern technology. Apa tajuknya? What is the title, Alia? Uh, uh, for this, uh, this uh, topic, uh, wait, I forgot the... <laughs> Kita apa, we'll try to figure out from what you have written, eh? Uh, children development at uh. this age of technology. Uh -huh. Effective parenting styles from Islamic perspective. Uh, okay change our life this is quite good so good try good try can be improved this is good way of uh, you know starting your statement of problem mm -hmm. uh, the application strategy impracticable compared to price yes sir at the beginning of exam until yes the application of technology is I don't understand what you what you were trying to say impracticable compared to at present as the technology has touching virtually every sphere of uh, I think this you need to improve uh, this place. Uh, there is Correct. also an exception for childhood, which is famous. Uh, I mean this is big, yeah. There is also no exception for childhood, which is the most uh, computerized generation. I can uh, I can gauge what you try to say, but um uh, <laughs> okay, maybe my guessing is wrong. Eh? Indeed, it will be an opportunity for children to discover and explore. But again, the researchers stress out what I've been mentioned to study. Where? Uh, so I say where? In previous studies, where? Where? In previous, where you have discussed it? Okay. In, yeah. I have to state the sources uh, for the research. Uh, we need to make sure that all children have the experience on the name the children. Okay, in uh, statement of problem, you need not to have uh, print. 
uh, unless if you are reporting data, macam uh, what, is there any data that you are reporting here? Technology in childhood, you know, because same or no problem, you are stating your problem. So, except that if you need to have evidence to state the problem, like for example, certain statistics, certain research, kan, but if you are citing for people just to um, just to make your statement of problem look good, you need not to do it, yeah? Okay, alright, Manu. Uh, yeah, I mean, hi. <laughs> okay, so this statistic is good. Okay, this statistic is good. Parents should be aligned with the worrisome issue. It is worrisome issues. But yeah, let's like list worrisome issues, yeah, because hence, because this is also, I mean, kind of bias lah, eh? So hence, parents should be alarmed with this issue. Uh, issue or with this statistics, with this report, yeah, uh, followed by the rising, bukan raising, eh? rising, rising RI of yeah. child pornography websites day by day by thousands of people. So, okay. Maybe what you can say, you can say the phenomenon coming out of this technology. So this, this, so, so you have the, the phenomenon, <coughs> one, the use of uh, screen, the use of screen, uh, hours spent on the screen. Secondly, the phenomenon arising out of uh, uh, exposure on technology, pornography, bully. Ah, these are already problems. Yeah? These yeah. are already problems. And these problems make you want to know how Islamic parenting uh, educate Muslim parents to face this problem. Yes. In simple way. Uh, so if you can arrange your statement of problem in this manner, super. Yeah. So tell the tell the you indicate. I mean, it's already here, but it's very jumbled up. Yeah. It's not uh, arranged accordingly. I think the the flow should be like this: stating the problems, uh, you use of screen. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe you have the statistic just now. You have the research just now, and then the problems arising out of the exposure to the technology, to the screen, and then uh, maybe you want also to say, uh, oh, no, I think enough lah. And then you want to say, uh, you can say uh, how Islamic parenting um, can help Muslim parents today uh, to educate their children or to nurture their children or to overcome the challenges uh, arising uh, out of the technologies. Yes. Panjang ni, the one that you are say too long. You need to take the problems with regard to children use of gadgets of internet and the possibility of, of a to lack of parent supervision. Ah, maybe you want also to highlight this lack of parent supervision. Tapi why only father? Why not parents? You are biased lah. <laughs> Both parents lah kan Cannot be father alone Mother and father Because they say ah, Provide a big feature for fatherhood mm, I know like that you are a lady kan And I know like many fathers do not care <laughs> But uh, yelah, But I think Because you you use Islamic parenting kan Yeah I want to do this Father Cannot be lah. Parenting is better. If you want to, to talk about father father's role, it's unfair because a family is developed by both father and mother. Okay. Yeah? But, uh, <laughs> that's why Tarbiyatul Awlad uh, in uh, Ihya Ulumuddin as well as Abdullah Nasir Ulwan did not did not differentiate between the role of mother or father. This is Islamic way of uh, approaching this issue. I think and when we look at the current situation, father alone or mother alone, we are addressing the symptoms of the problem, not the root of the problem. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless you want to you want to discuss about the crisis of parenthood. Ah, then okay lah, you can talk about oh why mother always play the role eh? Why All not right. the father play the role? 
then, then you can talk about you know motherhood and fatherhood but you're talking about nurturing children it should come from both parents children be the father alone or the mother alone yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> i'm the mother and father so it's very difficult you see now because my my husband passed away i thought that it's good to have uh, a husband to you know whenever i'm down and the husband can look after my children i can you know just get rid of them for a while and do my own things ah. <laughs> so we need both parties yeah to work together <laughs> okay um research objective to identify the challenges and struggle um not ident not to identify you already identify it all Mm -hmm. So you already identify the problems, you know, you know, exposure to screen, uh, to screen, all this pornography, so on and so forth. So you want to uh, explore the madam. How yes, about yes, uh, yes, yes. How about what? The, the, to explore the impact of uh, technology hmm. on the children development um okay can can mm -hmm. because i no. changed uh, to the new topic mm -hmm. uh, before this uh fatherhood mm. uh, challenge in educating children uh, children at the age of technology so i after i you mark the uh my research uh, question i changed mm -hmm. to children development at the age of technology mm -hmm. Hmm. Perspective, uh, parenting style, uh, parenting styles in uh, Islamic perspective. Okay, all right. Okay, so can you know one of the tips also to uh the to design your research question is to go uh from certain item in your title. For example, just now I say children development. What else? Children development in the age of technology. Yes. Right. And yes. then parenting style? Uh, in the Islamic perspective. In the Islamic perspective. So maybe uh, from Islamic perspective. And then that's all. Oh, yeah, that's all. Okay. So uh, you need to explain children development. Uh, children development. So this research is to explain children development or what do you mean by children development in the age of technology? So, uh, age of what do you mean by technology? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and then also uh, Islamic perspective of developing children, uh, mm -hmm. nurturing the children. So these three things can help you to design your question. Okay, question. So mm -hmm. I I don't know about the word children development here. Yeah, maybe you need to find better term because it looks great to me. Mm -hmm. uh, because if it is about, you know, it's about parenting style, kan? Uh, Islamic perspective, children, development, children. That is it. In the literature, you can find uh, when there are many literatures writing about the impact of technologies to children uh, to children so maybe you want to find the yes. word the appropriate word that is uh, pre prevalent in the literature okay. so one to i if you talk okay. about children development no, to see how the technology affects children development so to explore mm. the uh, technologies uh, you know, uh, used by the children and uh, happen to to explore the impact of technologies uh, on the children because we said just now about pornography, cyberbully, right? And then yeah. thirdly, to to uh, to to analyze uh, the Islamic perspectives on children development on the age of technology but this is very very big lah. Islamic perspectives on children development I, I think if you use Islamic parenting it would be good because Islamic 
I feel very very broad lah. Yes. But Islamic parenting, ah, ha, Islamic tu to advocate ke, to explore, to study, to analyze the Islamic parenting style in children, for example, in uh, in nurturing the children or in children development at the age of technology. Can mm-hmm. uh, it's more clear cut. All right. So, mm, okay, we spend a lot of time eh. Uh, it's okay lah because I want, I don't want you to, I mean I want you to do things correct. Uh, hopefully after this, um, you know, you can start pro- to proceed with your research. Because hmm? um, you need to submit a literature review kan. Today is the due date, isn't it? Isn't it? Today yes. is the due date of your literature review, but I don't know whether you people are ready or not. <laughs> but uh, but still this is but still this is useful because you still have another twenty marks, kan? Ah, you have another twenty marks. Yeah? Okay, contextualization in Christian evangelism to Muslim. Of uh, so so this uh, this organization you have to indicate in the title, yeah, Hana. Okay. Can you see the okay. your uh, of MBB, recently they have been increasing numbers of Muslim. Hana, bring the evidence, please. Uh, right. be like the Muslim says, stating that oh, hundred thousands becoming Christians. But when asked about the statistic, ah, uh, the evidence, I the evidence. Have, I have so put it in the literature review. Uh, ah, you? I, I put it in the literature uh. review. Oh, tak. Um, uh. Okay, maybe you can say there have been reports. Yeah, oh. there have been reports. There have been research stating uh. that there are increasing number of Muslims converting into Christianity. So, what is the difference between saying recently there have been increasing number of Muslims dengan there have been reports? What is the difference mm. between these two sentences? Okay, the first sentence says you are solely responsible for this statement. <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah, but the second sentence says you are delegating the responsibility to the research. If I put the footnote, ah, uh, you can. I mean, you can like this now. If you have uh-huh. the statistic, that will be good. If you want uh-huh. to put in the statement of problem, uh, uh-huh. the best is, for example, Aslina stated in um, you know article the the percentage of muslims converting into christianity 1920 you know uh, that there have been 30 percent increase of muslims joining christianity uh, for the past 10 years then mm-hmm. you need a footnote uh, but you need to have a uh, you know very good uh, evidence for that uh, but also you can say that there have been research and report reports on the eh? but then the one you can uh, give the detail in the literature review because in statement of problem um, as much as possible we don't bring citation we bring citations only if we have we need to use the evidence uh, we need to use the you know, we need to uh, to show the problem uh-huh. But if you say there have been research and reports, that is good enough in the statement of problem. Yeah? All right. Okay. Uh, there have been called Muslim. Yeah. Um, actually, can, uh, when you read this title, eh, Hannah, when mm-hmm. the person read the title, the first thing that the person wants to look in the statement of problem is contextualization. So you, okay, you have stated that the increased number, so you may want to say that the increased number is due to the contextualization of Christian evangelism. Mm-hmm. And this is done by the MBB. Mm-hmm. Uh, because over here, if you can find in the statement of problem, you use the word contextualization a bit later, can? No. Eventually, believe that the most effective model that helps increase the number of system problems, for instance, are by using contextualization. 
So um, you need to, like I said just now, if it is possible that you relate the increased number is because of contextualization, then only you see that evangelists believe that most effective model. Or you can say like this, uh, this model of contextualization is mostly adopted by the evangelist Christian. And this evangelist Christian that you want to study is the M and BB. Because they have been around where? In Malaysia ke? Uh, are they in Malaysia? Yes. Or they are elsewhere? I have five thousand and BB in Malaysia. Ah, okay, so you want to be baby in Malaysia. Okay, so you need not to say that church planting method is less effective, mm -hmm. but um, this is secondary lah. I mean, you can you can discuss this later because you can explain why the evangelists uh, move to another method or approaches, can? But mm -hmm. in the statement of Ravon, just focus about the contextualization that he, that this organization is adopting. So, um, but um, what is what is the meaning of contextualization here? Okay, so you need to you need also to uh, you know put a little bit here somewhere that. You know, the evangelists uh, use contextualization such as what? Oh, okay. Ah, such as apa? Jesus ke? Gospel. Uh, gospel, apa okay. dia? Uh, what is Jesus that? Lah. Jesus. They can contextualize Jesus. Okay, contextualize Jesus to the Muslim. Mm -mm. Uh, whatever lah, whatever. But then you have to give some examples. Uh, you have to give some examples of contextualization because yes, contextualization have many. I mean, translation of the Bible also contextualization, isn't yeah. it? Uh, yeah. So you need to give some examples, especially those adopted by the MBB. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So research questions who are okay. Because the title is contextualization, so um, I think first of all you have to explain what is contextualization, now, uh, and what is Christian evangelism, and then who are the MBB, and uh, what are their approach with regard to the contextualization. So maybe not person number one ni jadi number three. Uh, so, what is contextualization? Uh, this is good also. What is contextualization in Christian evangelism? Uh, so, you know, one question you answer two, two things. Good lah. Uh. So in the chapter, you have to answer contextualization. You have to answer what is Christian evangelism. This is in one chapter. So, Christian evangelism adapting. So, maybe we're not process uh, what are examples of uh, contextualization adopted by the Christian evangelists, uh, but then MBB lah, right? Uh, and then uh, what are the impacts? So maybe uh, question okay, so one of them. Uh, and then uh, maybe you you put this question number one down now because you start with contextualization, yeah. Uh, unless if you say MBB and contextualization of Christianity to Muslims in Malaysia. Uh, uh, and, uh, yes. uh, Muslim uh, MBB is the one that targeted by the evangelists. Oh, uh, Muslim they have been MBB, bukan Muslims MBB. Uh, not. Uh, uh. So MBB ni is not the evangelists. They were the proselytized Muslim. Uh, and then they become evangelists after they have been evangelized. Uh -huh. right ah, through the contextualization. Uh -huh. So maybe you want to start with the uh, MBB, MBB and their concept contextualization method uh, to Muslims in Malaysia. Mm. So, um, ah. because you want to study MBB, ke you want to study their contextualized method. I I want to study. If both. you want to, if you want to study. <laughs> Uh -huh. So you have to you have to have one anchor, uh, one anchor from that uh, anchor. Then you, 
I think uh, for me, I think I'm more interested to MBB. Uh, but then uh, I. Hmm. If you're interested in MBB, MBB should come first. But if you are interested uh, in contextualization, contextualization come first. Uh, I, I'm just worried. I'm just worried about this MBB because uh, hmm. do you have the hard evidence of MBB? I mean, in terms of documentation, in terms of reports, how are you going to get that? Mm, yeah, there are pieces that uh, recorded their um their presence, especially from uh, evangelist uh, evangelist part side. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, what side? Are they, uh, and, uh, are they uh, can will they be uh, cooperative? Say, for example, if you want to get their documents, if you want to interview them. Uh, because uh, they they have a website MBB conference and, and mm -hmm. uh, I read their website and I can see that they they can be we can interact uh, with them easily. Oh okay uh -huh. okay so okay make sure okay, uh -huh. during this period make sure you contact them mm -hmm. and then you uh, ask them if they are if they uh, are willing to cooperate with you uh, you know in terms of your research and be frank with them lah that you are writing an academic uh, work and you can make them anonymous you know like for example if you identify any of them mm -hmm. uh, interview them you can make them anonymous uh, mm -hmm. so you have to be frank to them that this is academic writing you're not going to disclose their identity uh, uh, it's confidential and that you just want to know the methods that they are using. Mm. Uh, so uh, and then it depends on whether they want to cooperate with you or not. Uh, but then, uh, say for example, because this happened to one of my students now. One of my students who want to wrote about uh, to write about um, Christian missionary in Malaysia uh by one of the churches. At first, the church said okay, they would they will they will be cooperating hmm. but then after the proposal has been approved uh she went to the church the church did not want to cooperate so i asked my student to modify a bit the title which she did lah. Uh, hmm. but then uh, this happened what i'm trying to say this happened hmm. uh, but if this happened the worst scenario happened what you can do is you can justify that you have did the preliminary uh, you know uh, survey discuss with them they want to cooperate but uh, you know finally they didn't want to cooperate so you can only your, you, you have limitations so you can put limitations of research that you have to depend on the website sources mm. This happened also to one another student of mine, master student. He, she studied about Indonesia. One of the incident whereby Muslims and Christians, you know, they had conflicts and you know they had uh, what you call that riots between the two on uh, the establishment of the one church in certain kampung in Indonesia in Jakarta. So at first the Christians uh, say that they want to cooperate, give information so. On and so forth, but once when my student managed to compile from the Muslim side, she didn't. Side she didn't. She didn't manage to get from the Christian side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she, she had to refer to the secondary sources. Lah, she couldn't interview any single Christian. I mean, that's very frustrating because she had the Muslim can interview mm -hmm. reports, but not the Christian. So, yes, yeah. I, I mean, don't. Um, how do I say? Don't don't be uh, frustrated you can explain that in the limitations of research but of mm. course when you uh, when you approach them you need to tell them frankly and you need to be very sincere what this research is all about uh, why why do we want to write this research but of course you cannot be very uh, what you call that very plain lah, like oh because you want to study how the christians approach Muslim because we want to help the Muslim to protect their Akidah. You don't say like that now. <laughs> but you say that you want to know uh, what are the avenues or what are, I mean academically speaking, contextualization uh, from the perspective of Christian evangelists. Yeah? So you want to academically study their methods and approaches. Yeah? Mm. 
Alright, so uh, depends lah. Like, I mean your research questions here are acceptable, yeah. But then, if you want to, when you say, okay, this is for general, uh, general uh, reminder. When you have, what are the impacts of contact tracing? What are the impacts? The moment you talk about what are the impacts, kan? You need to have the measurement. So you need to have the tools to measure the impact. Uh, so measure the impact either you interview people who have been uh, evangelized uh, or you uh, have a survey to see the degree of the severity of that impact. So always remember whenever you have impact you need to come with certain measurement. So if you have the measurement it's okay lah. Yeah, like for example here, Hana, mm -hmm. I, if you can interview any of the Muslims who have been, uh, you know, converted into Christianity, mm -hmm. then uh, this is one, maybe you need not to have many respondents pun, maybe mm -hmm. three because you need to do interview. interview. It's mm -hmm. in depth interview. Yeah? Okay. And uh, I will, I understand that during the defend uh, the committee will say ah why only three respondents very little ah, then you can answer because you are addressing very specific type of respondents mm. not uh, you know a larger scale respondents so therefore you need not to have uh, many respondents because even to get one respondent is challenging eh? mm. so you can see or maybe you can also uh, see for example if uh, but but this one is very specific lah. Case study, eh? case study. Uh, case study where, where, when you study in depth. Eh? But I don't encourage lah because if you make case study, you must make sure that you will get the cooperation from the respondents. Eh? Mm -hmm. So this is it uh, that I want to uh, highlight. Um, just be uh, certain lah whether you want to start with MBB or you want to start with contextualization. Okay, thank you, Madam. All right, and let's take a look at Miss Fighting. Yeah, a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, uh, <laughs> but you know what? I also mm. do mistakes. Um, I normally when I write my paper, I will send to proofreaders, and the proofreaders will be able to find my mistake. Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Not, not only for video, I send to editor, edit to edit my work. Yeah. Social behavior, uh, social rights and behavior to disabled people in Bangladesh, a study from Islamic perspective. Hmm, a study from Islamic perspective. Mm. I have I have problems with the word social rights and behavior. Did you get this in the literature? So if you can get, I mean, people use it, then it's okay. Otherwise, you have to explain. Huh? You have uh, to explain what do you mean by social rights and behavior? Social rights means uh, they're not getting rights like as like others. That's your definition. I don't want your definition. I want the literature's definition. It means that oh. it, is a, ah, it is a standard term used in the literature. Oh. Ah, so you need to find the right term to explain what you want to explain your meaning here because I'm not sure if the word social rights and behavior is a standard term used. So can I minimize here only the so uh, rights uh, the rights of the, the disabled people that is better yeah the rights of uh, the disabled people uh, in bangladesh yeah uh, that is more acceptable <laughs> it so then you can talk it will be considered as a topic or yes of course uh, except that, of course, I have some other observation. Now. I mean, it's okay for you to write on the rights of the disabled people in Bangladesh. Um, but then, I mean, are you going to study the whole Bangladesh? Uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the issues. But never mind, let's take a look what you have. Islam is a religion of humanity. A religion of Rahma, Islam does not tolerate any unpleasant treatment towards um, disability. So 
So you 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 stop at the religion as religion of Rahma. Um. Uh, okay, I don't think you should not. Islam does not treat tolerate any unpleasant treatment towards uh, disability because it is understandable if you state Islam is a religion of Rahma, and then you start straight away with disability is a natural part of human being and it's not a curse from the Almighty. Or what you can say from the perspective of Islam, yeah, yeah. disability. Yeah, it's not a curse or a sign of uh, disgraceful mm. from of the Almighty. Huh? Uh, yeah. I think, but some people think that it is a punishment for wrongdoing. Who says this? You you have to. Uh, who said this? Yeah, I one from one article I saw. He I mean uh -huh. some, he took some interviews and mm -hmm. people understanding or people thoughts oh. like that. Okay, so maybe you can say, but there have been perceptions that this ability is a form of punishment for the wrongdoings, uh, for human wrongdoings. Uh -huh. so say, but there have been perceptions. So it's not you saying, but there are perceptions among the people. Yeah? Uh, so this is good according to World Health Organization, 10% population disability. Uh, and then, okay, but then you want also to say that the constitution of Bangladesh, all country, all citizens, right to enjoy, so on and so forth. Okay, although, so this is a problem that you are stating, the government give equal right, yeah, facilities, but, uh, but I think, but uh, they are still not. Unfortunately, yeah. this is this is where you are heading to. Uh. But unfortunately, uh, okay. the, you don't say they are not getting proper. They are still improvements needed in terms of, of providing facilities, uh, in terms of uh, improve improving perceptions towards the abilities uh, or perceptions towards them. So, uh, it's, unfortunately, they have yet. Okay, another thing that I hope everybody can also um, uh, take attention. In ac academic writing, as much as possible, you try to avoid negative statements. Negative statements like this. Uh, they are not getting proper facilities and respect. Um, you, try to, uh, you try to change the into something positive like they have yet uh, or there should be more. Uh, greater facilities, uh, they should be given greater rights. Mm. How do you find that? I mean, sound positive, right? Uh, instead of, because instead they are not getting, so how confident you are. Uh, yeah, uh, so always remember that. Try to, try lah as much as possible. So not to so. <laughs> try should, to avoid. Hmm. There should be greater rights. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, also like this, people with uh, disabilities always face a negative attitude, not only from the society. So, don't say always. Uh, okay. yeah? So, you say people with disabilities are exposed to negative treatments from the society, institution, uh, and uh, even from his or her own family members. Understood? How do you find that? Yeah, say that always face a negative, but then uh, are exposed because you are stating. Okay, there is a difference between stating the problem uh, and being judgmental because you say always face. Oh, you are very judgmental. Uh, so. <laughs> but you uh -huh. are stating. You want to state the problem, but that's a statement of problem. How can I say here? People so you can say people with disabilities are exposed. exposed. Yeah, uh, you can say the media or the news, the report uh, says that people or the, re the, uh, the reports indicates that, you know, or research indicates that people uh, with disabilities are exposed to so on and so forth. Uh, okay. 
some people regarded as okay, this part being qualified. Okay, so this 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 is what you are trying to state about the problems yeah, uh, of disabled people. So you can say that you know uh, the disabled are challenged with certain perceptions by the society. For example, they are regarded as burden. They are discriminated. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. they cannot become, uh, they are discriminated in, uh, in the sense that uh, they are incapable. You see, I'm, I'm not using they are not capable. I'm using they are incapable or they have lack of access to, you know, to, uh, uh, to actively involve uh, in the societal activities. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, addition. So, however, I'm thinking about uh, in reality, in reality, uh, the disabled can contribute to national development uh, and can also bring honor to the country yeah, if they are given the proper. Uh, right, or they are given the opportunities to use their potentials. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So you are you are not trying to say that uh, you know uh, what the disabled can uh, is capable of. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um. Okay. Now you don't say that. Yet there has not been any specific study like uh, earlier. So these people, they for all these teachers, therefore seeks to, uh, seeks to explore, uh, uh, or seeks to explore, seeks to examine, seeks to study, or to discuss. Uh, um, actually, I'm I'm very uh, I'm very I don't know uh, how how Islamic perspective can help in this regard. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, what do you mean by Islamic perspective? Islamic perspective means when practice of Islam or whatever Islam says about uh, disabled people rights. Uh, Such as what? Where? Yeah, this is my struggle. Where? Oh. Oh. Where? Because, you know, this is very abstraction. I mean, you talk about Islamic perspective. Maybe you can talk about uh, Islamic perspective of uh, of the rights of uh, of the rights of men, of the rights of citizen. Then you can zoom straight away to, you know, the role of citizen. You, you understand what I mean? Because you say Islamic perspective, so what? Mm. Islamic perspective. Any verses of the Quran that deal with people disabled? Any hadith? Any specific uh, literature, book? Some, some of hadith is mentioned there. Then it's, it's talk about hadith. From the hadith of the Prophet. It, huh. Because, because can you see, don't use the word Islamic, but then you actually mean from the hadith perspective. Uh, the word but Islamic. I don't, uh, uh, the word Islamic here is misleading. <laughs> what I'm trying yes, to say. Yes, yeah. huh. So if I write from some uh, Quran and uh, Hadith from both, so how can okay, I Okay, uh, okay, tell me any of the Quranic verses. I mean, do you have enough material from the Quranic verses that talk about disabled, about treatment to disabled people? Quran uh, didn't say directly, but in different angles. Say, for example, uh, there is no term disabled in Quran but in the about rights people rights or people are equal from this perspective i got some verses not directly hmm. 
Well, um, okay, so if you see that, then how about, come, let us discuss about this because I know many pieces like Islamic perspective, Islamic perspective, Islamic perspective. <laughs> Uh, but which perspective is Islamic? I mean, you have to be very specific about it. Islamic perspectives of human rights. Ah, then you, you, you understand what yeah. I mean? Uh, Islamic perspective of human rights. Then you can, you know, the Quranic verses, the Hadith verses, or any of the Ishtihad. But if the Islamic perspective is written white. You understand? You understand? What? It's like I, I have always problem yeah, with this person from Islamic perspective. Which perspective? Ah, Islamic perspective so of human rights. You can write Islamic perspective of human rights. Human rights. Human rights. Yeah. yeah? Oh. So this study will attempt uh, to explore so to find. Uh, all right. So um, I think the uh, the remaining sentence too. You need to improve. Uh, improve the so. Um. Yeah, you, you need to read, right? This study will therefore attempt to explore the rights of the disabled people from the, uh, then, then you can from the right of the disabled from Islamic perspective, yeah? Uh, and um, the, 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 the several studies have been found that discuss this ability. Uh, you, you need to rephrase this, yeah? You need to rephrase this, but I think uh, now since uh, you, you have stated um, you know, Islam is the religion of Rahma, and they are disabled people, and this is the statistic of the disabled people in Bangladesh. Uh, and they have yet to get the rights, whereas they can exercise their role as uh, they can exercise their potential uh, if they are given the chance and they can contribute to the uh, national development. Yeah, so uh, and then uh. Uh, Islam discuss about uh, then you, maybe you can say about you know, Islam give every person the rights to what to live and the rights to uh, to use their potentials whatsoever and then even to the disabled yeah, even to the disabled. Therefore, this research looks forward to see uh, uh, how the disabled people uh, can be in operated in the nation, national or nation building in the nation building should they be given the rights should they be given the rights yep oh. yeah should they be given the rights yeah. if you no, have one more thing there is a there mm -hmm. until no specific study so i cannot use this sentence right Ah, uh, okay. You can use, but you use like uh, they are still uh, they have yet any research. Uh, uh, they, uh, the research in this area is still scarce, and therefore, uh, uh, it is important that more literature to be developed on the issues of the rights of the disabled especially from the Islamic perspective of human rights. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because actually you have a lead issue to discuss. You know why? Because can I tell you, uh, it's also good to discuss it from Islamic perspective of human rights, uh, especially in the context of what the Western say about equality and whatnot. Eh? Because in the West, then, those who are disabled, they are challenged to behave like a normal people. I don't know, from the perspective of human rights, is this, is this acceptable or not? For example, eh, for example, if you look at one uh, show, the title is Fear Factor. Uh, last time I watched Fear Factor. And then, 
uh, we have for example people uh, who are disabled who try to do parachuting on the wheelchair oh ha ah, and so they have to you know have very special uh, wheelchair uh, that enable this disabled person to parachute from to, to do parachute now is this from the perspective of you know islam uh, human right from the perspective of islam is this acceptable uh, i have also some arguments with the, some students lah of iium who you know challenge himself he want to do this he want to do that um i think some of you may know this particular person eh? uh, he climb kinabalu with his hands eh? and then he challenge he said he wanted to climb everest with his hands i don't know i mean maybe he wants to prove something for himself maybe he wants to prove something to the society but i said uh, what are you serving are you serving your ego or you are serving what i mean from the perspective of islam wala tulku bi aidikum ila tahluka i think this is even fundamental for me this is even fundamental and you know for example all these extreme sports eh? extreme sports is it priority in islam so you know but then in the west in the west the concept of human right is open up to this because what is the ultimate in the con in the human right of the west the ultimate in the human concept of human right in the west is pleasure is happiness happiness is a positive way of expressing uh, of of you know like expressing ple pleasure eh? happiness so if you're happy you do it this is the right of man to be happy but from the perspective of islam your happiness if it brings grudges it brings god anger or if it is against the concept or the fundamental concept of uh, islam are you supposed to be doing it for example like i said just now i mean you are disabled and you want to enter into extreme sports for me for me as muslim even mm -hmm. even though you are normal it's wrong to enter into extreme sport because what are you serving because the quran say wala tulku bi aidikum ila tahluka and we talk about all oh, give name good name to the nation is that what the concept of uh, uh, you know nation is from the perspective of islam so brother misbah you have very good actually a very good subject matter to study especially when you talk about perspective of human right if you can make a very good research of this masyaallah hmm, yeah because we really need to hmm come again islamic perspective of human rights human rights yeah human rights so because of course islamic perspective of human rights are different from the western perspective of human rights you know in the west uh, human rights is equal men and uh. women so men do this women also want to do this so that's why uh, normal men do this disabled also want to do this but what are they serving of course in the western context they are serving mm -hmm. this concept of happiness concept of pleasure but we muslims our concept well at least if you talk about happiness we don't talk only about the happiness in this world we talk about happiness in the hereafter okay we are happy to here in this world you know you are dis disabled but you can climb everest you can climb to nabalu and so on and so forth but what are you serving are you serving your ego and you glorify your ego but i i don't think this is very islamic i'm so sorry but i mean i beg to differ like in this matter some people may have a uh, no different ideas maybe they want to gain confidence about themselves and eh? because they they lack they lack confidence in themselves so they need to do this because they want to improve their confidence so i mean that's this very subjective uh, perspective of this person eh? but but that's why i say uh, I beg to differ. You know, I mean, he's just right to the way he thinks, but I 
I'm looking from the fundamental perspective of them. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at to explore the disabled from international perspective. To explore, okay, now if you have decided to talk from the human right, maybe you can discuss about what is the concept of human right in Islam. You can talk about the right of the disabled from, from this concept of human right, yeah. And then you want to explore the potentials of the disabled, uh, the contributions of the disabled so, to the nation building, uh, and then to to uh, not to discover possible solutions. So, but you want to uh, recommend ways of uh, improvements in terms of. Uh, State treatment or in terms of the treatments towards disabled in Bangladesh. All right. Um, so, uh, you want to identify relevant factors? I think maybe you, or maybe you want also to explain the uh, examples of uh, uh, discriminations happen to the disabled in Bangladesh. You may want also. Yeah? to identify examples of discrimination that have taken place to the disabled in Bangladesh. So maybe in terms of education, yeah, discrimination in terms of your access uh, of getting access to education, what else, getting, uh, uh, you know, job, getting employed, uh, what else? Whatever, then you can explain what are the examples of discrimination. Uh, if you want a neutral term, uh, if you want a neutral term instead of discrimination, you can also use the term, uh, what are the hindrances? Uh, hindrances to the disabled. Uh, so instead of discrimination, because when you say discriminations, it means that, you know, the country discriminate them. Uh, as I said just now, in academic writing, uh, we always prefer using objective uh, neutral terms. So, you know, people were not, uh, when people read your paper, uh, that is a higher likelihood for them to take your opinion because you make yourself objective. Yeah? But if you are judgmental, for example, you say, oh, discriminate. So, mm, oh, people will, mm, you are very uh, judgmental. Eh? Uh, like, judge for example, <laughs> if a government officer read your paper and he's dealing with a disabled, he how can you say we discriminate? We actually provide them with the assistance. Now. It's just a matter of we don't have enough money we don't have enough access to them or uh, uh, we are still improving our ways can so when you say discriminate it's you know it's not uh, positive lah that's not sound positive yeah. um, but to try try yeah. as much as possible from now can you try to write number, uh with number four again uh, minimize uh, uh, so. You, you you watch the recorded lecture. <laughs> I okay. cannot remember what I said just now because no. you, um, you write then one word after minimize down the minimize. What, what is you, you this one contribute to the discrimination. No, don't uh need not need not to have this lah possible solutions. You want to offer recommendations eh? uh, that can give a uh, better um uh, access uh, to the disabled hmm. so you want to recommend better uh, recommend ways of solutions yeah? uh, that can uh, give the disabled better access or better opportunities yeah? oh. in Bangladesh yeah? <laughs> Okay, so Ya Allah, we have spent the most time for this one. Um, <laughs> brother, uh, brother, no, not, not you, I mean the whole exercise. Lah, kan? but, uh, brother Abdul Karim, uh, if I were to, if I open up um, class, uh, let me see if I can share because 
I'm not sure if I can share from here recorded. Let's just let me see. I I submitted it, but you told me to delete until we made our final ah, submission. Oh, so that's why it is not there, yeah. But but I, I, I was need also to make my corrections. I don't know if what I did is true or not. Ah, because it's okay. a new one. Okay, the new one. So you have the. Even if you need to, if you need to you send it. Uh, yes, uh, I, I did it. I deleted it. When when you told me, I oh, deleted. You deleted. Uh, mm. Otherwise, I can take a look at it now. Uh, maybe if you want to share, you can share screen. Do you have it with you? You can share your screen. Okay. Um. Wait for me one minute, please. Okay, not a problem. So we stay for another 25 minutes. Is that okay, class? While Brother Abdul Karim look for the uh, for the piece of work. The last. Okay, maybe. Okay, 30 minutes. Eh? Now it's seven. Okay, while Abdul Karim is looking for the article, you can get yes, some drinks or coffee, whatsoever. Okay. It's already open. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. I think. Okay, it is there. Yes. Good. Thank you so much. Okay. So this is the title that Brother Abdul Karim proposed. A very interesting title. If you can enlarge the uh, view a little bit. Okay. Uh, I mean, you go to. Ah uh, yes, okay. okay, a bit smaller because I cannot see the whole screen now. Uh, smaller a bit. Uh, smaller. Okay, okay, good, great. The history of the Jewish community in Penang, Malaysia, and the issue of coexistence of critical analysis. I think this title is doable. Just a matter of I don't know if you can get access to the Jewish community, if you can, that is good enough, yeah? Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the statement of problem. Along and all of it, had unique tradition, special lifestyle, the most important issue is the issue of coexistence because of the nature based on the common the special reference groups. Okay, the Jews and non-Jews. This led to special measures will be gone to the issue of early such as uh, very good. Mm. Yeah, this is good. There is a lack of success that deal with Jewish uh, presence in Penang. Um, okay, maybe you don't write lack of success. Maybe like I said just now, uh, there is yet enough materials, uh, enough literatures. Yeah? That explores the Jewish with the explores the Jewish present presence in Penang, and most of the sources from Jewish perspective, okay, are written in Hebrew language. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, full stop, full stop. Yeah, okay. uh, in Hebrew language, full stop. Uh, due to this reason, there is an urgent need to analyze the information related to the Jewish community in Penang from another perspective. From another perspective, here, yeah, which perspective? From Islamic. an academic perspective? Islam, Islamic perspective. Oh, from an Islamic. From an academic perspective, we have we have we have also, we have already some academic, but it's uh, for those people. They mm. they did some things to um, to approve that uh, Jews in Malaysia would not totally um, have their right. You know, mm -hmm. so they uh, will support the Jews in everything. So no uh, Muslim scholar, Muslim scholar, uh, approve the uh, uh, another thing. Okay, from an Islamic perspective, okay, but then Islamic perspective of what? 
Oh, like just oh, now lah, oh, human rights ke Islamic perspective oh, two, two, main, two main things Two main ah. things The okay. first one, the classification of Jews in community They they so, they thought that they are ethnic group, not religious religion group For example, they are saying that we are Jews, you are Arab, you are Asian Not you are, we are Jews and you are Christian or Muslims No, they mm -hmm. think that Jews as uh, ethnic group mm -hmm. so i i found only i think one book for malaysian scholar mm -hmm. uh, she she adopted another perspective she said they are religion uh, okay. she studied the the, the the german community imprint in this period uh in addition the jews group related uh, regarding the the, uh, the german community so the uh, deal dealt with the the jewish community as religion group but the all of the resources dealt with Jewish uh -huh. as a ethnic group ethnic not not okay. like so we, we, i need to uh clarify that mm -hmm. okay you can you can say islamic perspective but islamic perspective of what islamic perspective of coexistence islamic Co perspective and the, and the I mean, uh, coexistence because they they deny ah, that, okay. and, uh, and the classification of uh, of Jews. The Islamic perspective for what of justice? Oh, uh, the first co what? coexistence and the classification oh, classification oh. because they they classify the people to uh, main kinds Jews and non Jews. Mm -hmm. Non-Jews. Yes. Non-Jews as goyim. Ah. Goyim as yes. Goyim. goyim is a bad word meaning mm -hmm. that like. Like Gentiles in yeah. English, yes. <laughs> yeah, but then non Muslims also said we have similar terms. Kufir. Uh, uh, kafir. In, uh, yeah, they, <laughs> they have already Kufir. They have word term as Kufir, called Kufir. <laughs> like Kafir in Arabic. So you know what? Uh, but in yeah, Arabic, but, we translated um, Guim as Aghyar. It's meaning non Jews. Yeah, Aghyar. Yep, yep. Yes. So, okay, if you want to carry on with another, cannot be another perspective alone. So you have to write Islamic perspective of what? So you you think about it lah, eh, from an Islamic perspective of what? Of coexistence, of uh, of social hierarchy, or uh, from Islamic social perspective, uh, something like that. Eh? Because um, I think when you talk about classification just now, you're talking about hierarchical in the society, right? Mm. So in the Jewish concept of society, there are only two hierarchies, either you're Jews or you're non-Jews. But from the perspective of Islam, so what hierarchies uh, does Islamic uh, society uh, discuss? I mean, what? Maybe in the past we have concept of, you know, uh, 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 Zimni, Harbi. Okay. So how are you going to deal with that? Yes, okay. I, I, I deal with that as it's religion group, religious group. It's no problem with oh. that in any in any community. But they think that uh, the word of Jews or joy or Judaism is a specific group, not only religion. Mm. Also in yep, Palestine, yep. in any in, in Middle East, they are saying always, "We are Jews, you are Arab." You, you know and not you we are jews you are muslim and christian no jews like mm -hmm. they have special uh creations yeah they they are special that. Creations. so so this yeah issue. they're children yeah. they're children of god <laughs> yes they, they yes they they believe in that so i i i i note i noticed also that in uh, with their uh scholars when they talk about the jews in Penang, they talk about mm -hmm. the group in the so same maybe time, uh -huh. uh, Jews and yes. Penang were from different backgrounds. One of them, uh, uh, part of them were, were from uh, Iraq, Baghdadi okay. Jews, or oh, one of them were Germany. So, uh, so maybe what you can include in your research here is the sense of exclusivism in Christ in Judaism. Yes, I have so, I have two main issues uh, or three uh, issues. The first one to explore the uh, organs of these groups, uh -huh. and uh, the second one the issue of coexistences. If if mm -hmm. they were uh, uh, with unfair de deal, how they will be, how they became traits 
mm-hmm. how they became uh, rich, rich people. They were rich. Mm-hmm. They have you have trading in Malaysia. So if if mm-hmm. if the Muslim community was unfair, how to how Jews can do that in in this period? Mm-hmm. The third the third one. Uh, I said uh, the, the the organs and the third one, the factors which lead Jews to leave Malaysia or to immigrate from Malaysia because they still in nowadays uh, doing a paper around uh, this uh, around this community. One one uh, Israel, Israeli people uh, wrote uh, a paper in the beginning of his paper. He said that Malaysia uh, does not allow us to. Uh, go and, uh, yes, to travel. But I did. He said that I did. I traveled to Malaysia. I, I visited Penang. I visited mm-hmm. our temple, our synagogue. Mm-hmm. Sorry, our synagogue uh, there. And so they they deal with this issue as like uh, revenge, I think, or something. You know, by lies, lies. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think you have very good subject to compare. So you know this concept of exclusivism in the in in Judaism, but then you have also maybe you talk about the perspective you know just now. Uh, maybe you can discuss about the Islamic perspective of a minority. Oh. Because you know uh, this fig fig of my minority. Okay. So, fig of minority. Last time we have we talk about fig uh, Zimi Harbi, right? But today I think uh, who is this person? His name is um, Allah uh, Akbar. Jasir Auda spoke about fig. Al, I'm trying to recall fig al Muafana. I was. Uh, is it? In Arabic, yes, it's meaning coexistence. Uh, uh. Co- yeah, pick of citizenship, right? That's uh, uh, so, yeah. yeah, because in Malaysia now we develop pick about uh, living together. So pick at the Amul, pick al Muatana, pick at the Ayush. These are among the things that are developed in the discourse of coexistence in Malaysia. Yeah. So I think it's good if you talk about from the Islamic perspective of coexistence, you can discuss this. Uh, you know, uh, what are the relevant uh, legal uh, rulings about dealing with the minorities? So, what you can say, look, in Islam, we don't have this hierarchy that, you know, you are, even though you are, uh, that you are minority, but you are second class citizen, or you are, you know, negative lah in that manner. But in Judaism, you have this concept, either you are Jew or you are non-Jew. Yes. And then if you if you do, you're so special. They, they, they have but, they have no problem with this. They know that. And yes, proud, yes, proud yes, 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 yes. But but yes. when they talk about this community, they talk anti-Semitism because Malaysian mm. anti-Semitism, you know. So how mm. have they dealt with Jews at, 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 mm. uh, as as unlike people, and they can mm. succeed in this community? Uh, how can you collect a lot of money? Yeah. You do something. So, yes, so I, yes. found, I found yes. I found also something strange. Uh, one yes. one of uh, the leaders of Zionism visited Penang uh-huh. in the beginning of uh, 20th century. Mm. So it was yes. so important uh, community for Jews in mm. this time. Good, good. Mm. I think you have very good uh, research. Uh, I I my read some books about. It. Therefore. Yeah, and you already you already have the gap. Okay, you know what? Uh, for a master thesis, you can you need not to be too broad. You can zoom to certain issues, but hopefully, when you do your PhD, you can benefit some of your findings here to further explore. I mean, you can write similar topic. I'm mean, not similar, like you can extend the topic for your PhD thesis. So for your masters, you try to zoom into particular area, maybe this concept of coexistence, but this can be your ground to discuss, uh, to do something broader and more serious, uh, more constructive for your PhD. So I, I strongly encourage you to proceed with this discussion. Uh, but to fill the academic guide by the factor in this measure, okay. 
Write the Jewish group which they follow and they will be studied to the station that we have in Israel. Okay, so you are going to do historical, you are going to study the historical development of the Jewish community in Malaysia. And this is the research gap uh, uh, in your research. All right, can we see your research objective and research question? So, what are the historical origins of gay good? What is the Jewish movement that the Jews in Penang followed? Okay, good. What was the Jewish view of existence? Why you use the word was? Uh, why you use past tense here? What was the Jewish view of existence with Sanjay? Why not this? Is it what was the Jewish view? I mean, I mean the, the, the Jewish view since in this time, the, the, this group only, not all Judaism. Here I think. Okay, was here referring uh, was was here referring to which particular time? The, the, uh, in, in the beginning of uh, 1940 until uh, uh, 1840 until 1970. Oh, you mean the common the Jewish community at that particular yes, time? Yes. How how they were dealing with uh, mm -hmm. another people? They were live, I think, in uh, Yahudis, uh, Galan Galan Yahudi in, in Bahasa, I think. Galan or Jalan, I don't know. So, Galan oh, yes. Yahudiya, Share, Share. What? Well, so maybe, you can, say, uh, maybe the, you can say what was the, I mean, the early Jewish pop, Jewish community, lah, because you are referring to the early Jewish community views, right? Not the yes. current Jewish community in Penang, right? Yes, they be, because the, the last the last one of this community was did in. Uh, uh, 2011. Okay. So maybe you can say what was the early Jewish uh, community views or the early Jewish settlement view. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, because we want to say this is this is a view of the past, not the view of the current Jews. Uh, the early Jewish community. Early. The early Jewish community. Ah, uh, early Jewish community in Malaysia, lah, I think. Or in Penang, uh, in Penang, uh, view of coexistence. Ah, uh, okay, yep, yep, yep. Mm. What are the factors that led to the immigration of the Jews in Malaysia? Alright, um, I think, I think you need to know the factors why they come to Malaysia. No, no, no. I, I, I this, uh, I, I did, I did the factors in this uh, the historical background. They, uh, okay. they, they were in bad. Uh, bad position so they choose uh, Penang because it was great court in that time and they can collect a lot of money make it. but mm -hmm. they 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 now talking about why they leave left Malaysia because they are saying that maybe uh, Malaysia refused them rejected the Jews mm -hmm. so oh, we need okay. to, to to clarify that maybe they have um Oh, okay. Zionism aims or goals against Islam and Muslims. They have uh, some greed uh, in Asia. So I need to you study know, this point. So you, say, you see the immigration of the Jews from Malaysia. You mean they leave Malaysia? They left Malaysia. Is yes, that what yes. You mean? Yes. So, I, so if you see immigration, I think emigration e not im because immigration means they come to Malaysia. You check, uh, yeah. I think if, you're, if they are living then the emigration of the Jews from Malaysia, I mean, they leave Malaysia. You check out M-E, E, instead of I, you put E, 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 emigration. Ah. Okay, but then, you, you remember just now you want to compare from the Islamic perspective of the existence, where are you going to put it in the research question? Oh. Ah, so you put there in the research questions, one. And then you try to merge uh, any two questions together. So, so you I, have to I should to do this Islamic and with Jewish. Is it? Uh, are you going to, because you're going to compare, right, from the Islamic perspective of coexistence. Yes. You're, you're going to analyze from the Islamic uh, pers perspective. So, so, of so I need to change, I, I need to change that, this question. No, no, no. no. no, no, no. Uh, add one more question. Okay. Number five, okay, num okay. What are the Islamic perspective of coexistence? What are the Islamic perspective of coexistence? 
All right. Okay. So for existing. And this can can I did it uh, from uh, Jewish Judaism? No, it's, okay. I mean? it's okay. This question is okay, okay. but I think uh, maybe question one and two you can merge. You can combine, so you have only four research questions. Okay. So, for example, what are the historical origins of the Jews in Penang and the what can I see just now? Uh, and because when you talk about historical origins of the Jews in Penang, you are going to talk about the about the Jewish sect in Penang, right? Yes. Uh, so I think question number one, question number two, you can join, but then you have to rephrase. Okay. Uh, so you can join the two, but you have to rephrase lah. Try to rephrase the two. Okay. I, I make it as one question you, you mean ah, that? Right? Yes, yes. Because basically when you talk about their movement in Penang, you're talking about their historical, maybe you can talk about historical origins and development of the Jewish sect in Penang. Okay. Uh, historical origins and development of the Jewish sex in Penang. When you talk about Jewish sex, then you will discuss from which secretarian they are. This did not need it. Eh? Ah, so because you have, because definitely you're going to discuss it, this element of the Jewish sex. Uh, what are the historical origins and development of Jewish sex? Because you're talking about Jewish sex in Penang, right? Yes. Ah. So in uh, definitely you will discuss uh, you discuss about their origin definitely you will discuss the particular secretary because the, the sect is main um, important factor yes, to yes. talk about coexistence some of them is uh, oh. tolerant uh, people okay, but okay. another group fight against any okay. yeah and and that's why you you have this question in number 3 yeah, whether yes, uh, right. to, because we want to talk about this. This, this, this question based, uh, based on the information regarding this question. Yes. When I know, yes, yeah. when I know they, their 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 sects, I will uh, examine their books. Exactly. Because, yes, yeah. some some groups believe in some books of Jews of Judaism and mm -hmm. deny the another some and the some okay. of them uh, okay. like this. They, they are very diverse uh, groups in Judaism. Yes, yes. So it's important to know which particular secretarian they affiliate with in order for you to understand yes, their I idea. Would, in this world, there, there are some sects against Israel. Jews yes. against Israel. Yes. They, yes. So the, I, reform, the reform Jews in comparison to yes. the conservative Jews, the ultra-Orthodox Jews. Yeah? Yes, yes, and the natural cartels, meaning uh, the guards of the city, natural the cartels. They they say it's not uh, it's, uh, not halal to be Israel. Yes, they are not kosher. It's not halal in Hebrew. That Israel because they think that Israel will be established by the God, not by us by us as as Jews. Okay, very interesting. Okay, this is going to contribute a lot to the uh, what you call it Malaysian uh, uh, readings on the on on Judaism. And as well as the Jewish uh, people uh, in this uh, archipelago in this uh, region, yeah. So the research objective will follow the research question. So, uh. so I hope I guess uh, these are clearer to you now. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, uh, all of you will be able to develop a uh, you know, good literature review. I will read your literature review, your submission, and then suggest maybe uh, what I will I need to do is. Just to uh, tell you how to, um, you know, to explain better or what are the literature that are needed to substantiate your uh, your research, yeah? uh, things like that. But, uh, but uh, yeah, you, just, you submit to me and then let me see how I can help to that. At least, at least when you submit the final draft, you are confident that you can nominate a supervisor uh, uh, this semester inshallah all right so i guess i cannot start with research sampling today 
but uh, you know we have used the whole time to discuss your SOP, RO, and RQ. But inshallah, this this is useful. Inshallah, eh? uh, inshallah, next class we will discuss uh, research sampling, and I will compress research sampling and pilot study. Okay? Because today is supposed to be research sampling. <laughs> next class is pilot study, but I will compress between the two in our next meeting. So, yes. Yeah, thank you very much, all of you. Yeah, you. Uh, all the best and take care. Inshallah, I'll see you again yes. next week. Yeah, I will share the recorded lecture. Inshallah, don't worry. Okay, inshallah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Uh, assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Yes. Yes. Assalamualaikum, yes. 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 Today is a literature review.